Chitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvita Chandra Jaya Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare So today I have uh, I have changed location and uh, so I want to take you to uh, to Vrindavan to where Lord Chaitanya is uh, is experiencing extraordinary uh, ecstasy in relation to the Dham. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is in, in Vrindavan it's is not for a moment is he uh, is he uh, is he forgetting uh, not for a moment is he not intensely uh, relishing relishing every aspect of the dog that is Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu um, so I'll read a little bit from chapter uh, 18, Madhya Leela, chapter 18, uh, text 135. One day, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu sat at the bathing ghat of Akura Tirta and thought the following thoughts. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu thought, at this bathing place, Akura saw Vaikuntha, the spiritual world, and all the inhabitants of Raja saw Golok Vrindavan. While considering how Akrura remained within the water, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu immediately jumped in and stayed under water for some time. When Krishna saw that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was drowning, he cried and shouted very loudly. Balabhadra Bhattacharya immediately came and pulled the Lord out. After this, Balabhadra Bhattacharya took the Sanodhya Brahmana to a secluded place and consulted with him. Balabhadra Bhattacharya said, Since I was present today, it was possible for me to pull the Lord up. But if he starts to drown in Vrindavan, who will help? Now there's a crowd of people here, and these invitations are causing much disturbance. In addition, the Lord is always ecstatic and emotional. I do not find the situation here very good. It would be good if he would get Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu out of Vrindavan. That is my final conclusion. <coughs> ah, excuse me. So, that is, uh, that is how Lord Chaitanya was in Vrindavan. Yeah. So much, so much relishing, relishing the transcendental nature of the Dham. Not for a moment, not for a moment was Lord Chaitanya uh, forgetting, forgetting the intensity of where he was. Hmm. When Lord Chaitanya came to Akrura Tirta, uh, that Akrura Tirta, where Akrura saw Vaikuntha, and it said also the residents of Vrindavan later on were shown uh, was shown Golok Vrindavan by Krishna in that place. It said then, uh, Akura Tirta, when Lord Chaitanya entered into the water, he had attained the Yamuna, he had attained perfection. So Lord Chaitanya did not see any point, uh, any point in, in getting out of the water. I mean, why? Why would he get out of the water? didn't make sense. Rather, he was simply, uh, he just, just stayed in there. It was perfect in the Yamuna. Of course, that, that might lead to uh, drowning. Uh, that was something he didn't consider. Uh, but the devotees, uh, the devotees who were with him, of course, they were getting very, uh, very, very worried that uh, 
he might drown. He just he's not coming out of the water. Um, so, therefore, um, they decided to take him out of Vrindavan, and after after some planning, they decided that they would uh, take him, uh, take him along the path on the Ganga, and said, now, um, text 145, part of the 80, it is now the beginning of the months of Mark. If he can go to Prayag at this time, we shall have an opportunity to, to bathe for a few days during Makara Sankranti. Uh, so an auspicious time. And uh, so they thought would bring the Lord to uh, hmm. one second where are we hmm. although the Lord Let's start here. Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. No, again. So Balabhadra Bhattacharya asked permission for Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to leave Vrindavan. And although Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had no desire to leave Vrindavan, he began to speak sweet words just to fulfill the desire of his devotees. Text 153, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, You have brought me here to show me Vrindavan. I'm very much indebted to you, and I shall not be able to repay this debt. Whatever you desire, I must do. Wherever you take me, I shall go. And then Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is leaving and and they're walking along the path on the Ganga, uh, along the Ganga. And uh, it's Ganga must be Yamuna. It says Ganga Tirapati. But uh, if you come from Vrindavan, it must be Yamuna. We see sometimes Yamuna is also referred to as, as Ganga, like as it is said that uh, Maharaj Pariksit in, uh, was ready to give up his life is set on the banks of the Ganga, but only Yamuna is flowing there. Hmm. While walking, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, understanding that the others were fatigued, took them all beneath a tree and, and sat down. There were many cows grazing near the tree, and the Lord was very pleased to see them. Suddenly a cowherd boy blew on his flute, and immediately the Lord was struck with ecstatic love. Filled with ecstatic love, the Lord fell to the ground, unconscious. He foamed about the mouth, and his breathing stopped. While the Lord was unconscious, ten cavalry soldiers belonging to the Muslim Patan military order rode up and dismounted. Seeing the Lord unconscious, the soldiers thought, this sannyasi must have possessed a large quantity of gold. These four rogues here must have taken away that sannyasi's riches after killing him by making him take the poison, the tura. Thinking this, the Patan soldiers arrested the four persons and decided to kill them. Because of this, the two Bengalis began to tremble. The devotee, Krishna Das, who belonged to the Rajput race, was very fearless. The Sanodia Brahmana was also fearless, and he spoke very bravely. The Brahmana said, You Patan soldiers are all under the protection of your king. Let us go to your commander and get his decision. This sannyasi is my spiritual master, and I'm from Mathura. I'm a Brahmana, and I know many people who are in the service of the Muslim king. This sannyasi sometimes falls unconscious due to the influence of a disease. Please sit down here, and you will see that he will very soon regain consciousness and his normal condition. Sit down here for a while and keep us all under arrest. When the sannyasi regains his senses, you can question him. Then if you like, he can kill us all. 
The Patan soldiers said, You are all rogues. One of you belongs to the western lands, one to the district of Mathura, and the other two, who are traveling, belong to Bengal. Rajput Krishna does said, I have my home here, and I also have about 200 turkey soldiers and about 100 cannons. If I call loudly, they will, they will come immediately to kill you and plunder your horses and saddles. Bengali pilgrims are not rogues. You are rogues, for you want to kill the pilgrims and plunder them. Upon hearing this challenge, the Patan soldiers became hesitant. Then suddenly, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu regained consciousness. Coming to his senses, the Lord very loudly began chanting the holy name. Hari, Hari. The Lord raised his arms upward and began to dance in ecstatic love. When the Lord shouted very loudly in ecstatic love, it appeared to the Muslim soldiers that their hearts were struck by thunderbolts. Seized by fear, all the Patan soldiers immediately released the four persons. Thus, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did not see his personal associates arrested. At that time, Balabhadra Bhattacharya went to see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and made him sit down. Seeing the Muslim soldiers, the Lord regained his normal senses. All the Muslim soldiers then came before the Lord, worshipped his lotus feet and said, Here are four rogues. These rogues have made you take the tura. Having made you mad, they've taken all your possessions. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, They're not rogues, they're my associates. Being a sannyasi beggar, I do not possess anything. Due to epilepsy, I sometimes fall unconscious. Out of their mercy, these four men maintain me. Among the Muslims was a great person who was wearing a black dress. People called him a saintly person. The heart of that saintly person softened upon seeing Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He wanted to talk to him and establish impersonal Brahman on the basis of his own scripture. Um, before I, I carry on with uh, with this part of the chapter, um, I wanted to discuss uh, um, sort of a happy topic today, name, namely death or uh, mortality. Um, we are all mortal beings and uh, somehow or other we are all, uh, all facing death, actually. Not only sometimes, not only sometimes, but, but always. Hmm. Someone's saying there's a problem in the sound, and it can be because I cannot use the microphone because I just... No, I'm using a different device. Can you not hear me? This device needs other connection, which I don't have. Can you hear me? Hmm. Hmm. Okay, yeah. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry for the tomorrow. I'll sort out the uh, the the issue. I'll get a little closer to the to the thing. So these, uh, I wanted to discuss to cheer you up a little and discuss the topic of mortality. Seeing that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has absolutely, uh, when he's come to the uh, fully transcendental state. Uh, that he has no longer any interest in in keeping body and soul together. Um, that to him has become something completely irrelevant. We're seeing that when Lord Chaitanya's uh, associates are being arrested by uh, Patan soldiers, that they are uh, responding in different ways. There is the Sanodia Brahmana, who is a uh, who is a transcendental uh, personality, because the Sanodia Brahmana, he was an intimate, uh, he was a disciple of Madhavendra Puri, 
And because of Madhava Nepuri's association, he had become very transcendental. Lord Chaitanya had visited his house, and they had danced in ecstasy, and uh, they were like clearly uh, sharing another uh, another dimension in their exchange, and it's quite clear that 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 devotee was on the uh, on very advanced levels of Krishna consciousness. So he was abhayam, he was fearless. And uh, yes, there was Ksatriya and Krishna Das, and he was fearless in facing these Patan soldiers, he was fearless on another level. Huh? He was fearless in the sense that uh, he was courageous. He was very brave, and therefore, uh, having that Ksatriya spirit, uh, he was ready to rise to a challenge, and therefore he immediately called out in a very, uh, very loud, "I have so many soldiers, cannons, this, that, and you know." And it sound, and because he was saying it with so much confidence, it kind of. Uh, it seemed to, uh, to 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 carry some truth, huh? whereas the uh, there were the, the, the Bengalis. They were uh, not such heroes, and they were shaking, and they were they were trembling a different mood. Huh? So we're speaking about death, and uh, and we're speaking about being uh, being fearless hmm. and uh, being fearless is something that is uh, is not so easily to achieve um, one has to uh, totally totally detach from uh, from any interest in the material world as long as we have any interest to pursue in the material world, how can we be fearless? Um, because that's the nature of the material world, is that uh, everything is always in danger. Padam, padam yad vipadam nati sam. There's danger at every step. It is like sometimes that danger is more overtly, and when the danger gets very overt, uh, then we are feeling the, uh, the immediate presence of death, but the reality or, or of a threat, um, but in reality, that threat is always there. As I said, whether we may look death in the face, and sometimes we are faced with death, but then at other times death is right behind our back. Death is always present in the material world. And in, as such, as such, this is, uh, is a very... Uh, Is, is the one thing that is very certain. We will die. Everything else in the material world cannot be sure what will happen. But as far as that one thing, we are sure. So this topic of, of mortality um, is a topic that is always relevant um, now. While the world is in a pandemic, or something recovering from a pandemic, uh, there is uh, there is more focus on death. Mm. Yeah. So when we uh, when we see devotees like the Sanodia Brahmana. That Sanodia Brahmana uh, 
had no attachment to the material world. His only attachment was to Krishna. And so he was fearless. Hmm. Now, when we contemplate for a moment, if we, uh, if it comes to the point of, uh, of dying, uh, then, let us say, suddenly, uh, at the time of death, we stand before Krishna. So what will we do? Uh, Krishna, karmana daivani prena. It is, it is by divine, uh, by our karma, and by divine arrangement, that our next destination is determined. Yami Bhagavad Gita is saying, Yam Yam Bhavi Swaram Bhavam Chalati Antikale Vadam. Krishna is saying, whatever state of being you remember at the time of death, that's what you'll attain. So now if you remember Krishna, okay, then we will attain Krishna. So if we come before Krishna, if now we would would be at that point that we come before Krishna. What are we bringing with us? That is the question. What are we bringing to Krishna? That we are bringing uh, the result of our devotional service. We are bringing the remnants the re of sinful activities. We are uh, bringing offenses. Hmm. Now we can say, so what can we say to Krishna? We can say to Krishna, Krishna, uh, I have tried to give up my sinful ways. If one has taken up devotional service and made a commitment to purity, then we can say to Krishna, Krishna, I've tried to give up my sinful ways. And if, if I, I still made mistakes uh, due to previous condition I pray that you forget you forgive me because I've tried and I am trying I'm trying to rise above these things hmm. so would we have to ask Krishna for forgiveness uh, would we have to ask Krishna please forgive my mistakes uh, knowing that we make mistakes but if we sincerely try uh, if we sincerely try and really know that we gave it the best we had then uh, then we can ask Krishna yes please please forgive me my mistakes uh, that I made in trying to be sinless in trying to be dedicated to you and in this way we can be abayam in this way we can face our mortality with fearlessness um, trusting that Krishna will protect us uh, that we are protected by Krishna because that is the big question yeah? is when does to what extent does Krishna protect a person who is not pure. If a person is not purely following, not purely following uh, Krishna consciousness, to what extent, to what extent is Krishna going to uh, protect that devotee from taking another birth in the material energy? The one thing, the one thing uh, that we have learned in this life is that this material world is not uh, a, a wonderful place. That the material world is a place where we do not wish to remain. That the material world, okay.
Yeah, so I'm speaking closer into the device and uh, I think that should do it. Huh? So, the material world is a place where we are not very easily, uh, you know, where, where, we, where we are not satisfied. Here in the material world, we are experiencing our, uh, our, uh, the, I have to focus a little more because I'm getting messages about, uh, about sound. Tomorrow I'll, I'll make a better arrangement. For today you have to tolerate, so please don't message me. The, uh, We may find that in the material world there, that it's not a real place of happiness. So when we're looking at it, we may, um, and we've taken up spiritual life, then we're not just blinded by, uh, by all kinds of varieties of sense gratification. Of course, we prefer, we prefer, uh, we prefer to have some more, uh, pleasant, uh, some more pleasant uh, circumstances, but uh, we'll tolerate it when it gets a bit austere. Uh, we're not looking particularly to squeeze the maximum enjoyment out of the material world. Therefore, sense enjoyment is not our objective. Okay. But we can go to another pastime in the Chaitanya Charitamrita and, and we can see how Advaita Acharya, uh, that Advaita Acharya, his son, was a very nice, nice boy, a devotee. And, and one day this son just fell unconscious and it, it, uh, it looked very serious. And Advaita Acharya was, uh, was very upset. Uh, and very concerned. Uh, he wasn't detached at that point. He was attached to his son. And one might say, yeah, because the son was not just an ordinary son. The son was a devotee. And Peter Chari was a devotee. And one should be attached to a devotee. Very good. So what of our children are devotees? And we are... Uh, and, and if anything would happen, we would naturally uh, become overwhelmed. So, these kind of attachments, uh, are they going to uh, interfere, interfere with our dedication to Krishna? So, no, because the, this, this is a, this, it is, we're here dealing now with relationship between devotees. Attachment to a devotee is, is not entangling, is, is liberating because it brings Krishna. All right, so is that really also there in, in family relationships? Uh, when we are attached to children, atta husband and wife, everyone is a devotee. Uh, but to what extent are we pure in our motives? To what extent are we uh, attached because they are wonderful devotees? Or to what extent are we attached because they are our material providers? They are, uh, uh, we rely on them for our material needs. And if so, um, if we go before Krishna, and we have other motivations. Yes, we have other motivations at the time of death, motivations uh, for our personal security, for our personal comfort, and so on. Motivations other than the service of Krishna. Will that be, will that not bring us back to the material world? That fear is there in our heart. Um, definitely now in our spiritual life. 
such fear is there? Will it be enough? Will I dedicate it myself enough that when the time of death comes, that I will be free, that I'll be anyavilasita sunyam, that I'll really be free from any other motivation, and that I can just cent percent just turn to Krishna and say, Krishna, uh, I am yours. I am yours. And and I have no other interest than your interest. And as you desire. It is therefore that uh, that the sannyas ashram is uh, is an ashram of preparation um, of or for for that particular moment. All ashrams are preparing for that moment, but the sannyas ashram is specifically preparing for that moment to fully take shelter of Krishna. So and therefore, just cut off all the material uh, securities and arrangements and uh, and even go into the forest, tigers or not, face dangers, abhayam sattvasam sudhir, uh, develop that, uh, that spirit of fearlessness. Hmm. Now, anyone can develop that, not only sannyasis. Uh, but sannyasis are focused on this. That is their... Uh, one of the reasons why they take sannyas is to develop fearlessness. Uh, fearlessness uh, so that at the time of death they can just go before the Supreme Lord and say, okay, I have, I have nothing, you know, I have nothing to do in this world other than, than propagating your mission." Nothing else. I have no other objective. Um, of course, in other ashrams, sometimes there's a need for uh, material arrangements, mm. and uh, especially Krihasta uh, ashram. But again. Once one makes only these material arrangements to support spiritual life. So if the material arrangements are only there to support spiritual life, then then no, no complication. Then that should not cause any any obstruction. That should be should be fine. Therefore, then the Vihasta Ashram is also a, a perfect condition for becoming fearless. But this fearlessness is required where we, where we have to shift our focus and look at Krishna and look at Krishna's interest and look at what, what does Krishna want, what does Krishna need and what am I doing, what am I doing to contribute to that, what am I doing to offer Krishna uh, what he needs. Uh, what am I uh, contributing in 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 my character and in my behavior? Uh, in other words, in consciousness and in my actions. Uh, at least everything in my consciousness should be for Krishna. At least everything in my uh, consciousness should be focused on Krishna. All my activities must be connected with Krishna, every single one of them. Uh, all my actions must be a constant string of activities which are connected with Krishna consciousness. And whether these activities are directly uh, engaging in Krishna service or indirectly supporting Krishna consciousness. That is to be there. Now what to do if we are professionals in the world? We are, uh, we are devotees, but we also have some material profession. Um, all right, but then let's use the fruits 
the fruits of that work for the service of Krishna. Let us maintain a Krishna conscious lifestyle and a Krishna conscious world of the fruits of our, our work and let us support uh, the, uh, the direct activities of Krishna consciousness. Hmm. So I was, I'm going back because the topic today is, uh, is, is mortality. Hmm. Or the topic is that that the the point where we're facing where I'm focusing today is facing death is facing Krishna, right? Uh, we're talking Krishna, so facing Krishna at the time of death that is what I'm talking about, and facing Krishna. My question was at the beginning of this lecture as to uh, what are we bringing to Krishna? Uh, what are we bringing to him? So, if I'm bringing him um, um, I'm not only bringing him my consciousness, I am also bringing to him my actions. Uh, even when my consciousness is is not perfect. I hope that my actions are going to uh, are going to uh, make a difference. Um, that uh, Krishna is, after all, merciful, and Krishna can be purchased by mercy. So I hope that whatever I'm bringing uh, to Krishna will be enough to purchase his mercy. Mm. So, Krishna said, so, I have this mercy here. Mm. You want to buy it? Mm. <laughs> what have you got? What have you got? He said, well, uh, I've got, uh, I've got, 27 full Govardhan Parikas. Oh. Right? That's very nice. Oh. Oh. That's something. But, no, no, no. What else do you have? Uh, oh, uh, I, 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 I regularly went on, um, on Harinam. Okay. 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 That, that's very good. In this way, huh? what weight? What weight are we putting in the scale? What weight are we offering? That is the question. Huh? So yes, each of us live a life, and and we should think. Huh? that what can I bring to Krishna? Yes. And uh, yes, for example, uh, worshipping the cows. Mm. Yes. Um, this life, personally, I have not done a lot of service to the cows directly, although I was uh, supporting the Goshala in Vrindavan as the temple president and making arrangements that the cows would be cared for, and I and I, I did and. Uh, I did that uh, to the best of my ability and I, I tried to make very sure that no cows uh, would ever leave our protection in the Gosha. So, in this way, go seva. Hmm. Because after all, Krishna says, 
Namo Brahmanya Devaya Go Brahmanya Itaya Cha Jagat Hitaya Krishnaya Govindaya Namo Namaha That the cows worship of the cows and the Brahmanas and first the cows and the Brahmanas huh. this is uh, is especially dear to Krishna so that is there huh. um, and then of course yes Harinam Sankirtan to do something to spread the holy name huh. and I've, I personally feel that that's a major uh, a major focus uh, on how to how to spread the holy name mm. somehow or other and how to engage people in chanting uh, chanting Hare Krishna and uh, that is something that is required and there may be um, some who are really good in connecting to uh, to new people, and others who are really good in uh, in setting a high standard and maintaining a high standard, and both um, both are there. Yes, um, ultimately. So, as we are putting out the influence of this movement into the world, uh, we're putting out the whole uh, collective influence of the Vaishnavas because we are representing that. We're representing something. Uh, we're representing the assembled Vaishnavas. And within that assembly, there are so many different personalities. There are great, uh, great exalted personalities who are uh, very deep. And there are, uh, it's said in Varnashram that the sannyasi is the head, the vanaprastha, the arms, the, the, the grihastha is the waist, and the brahmachari, the legs, in the, in the Sankirtan movement. So yes, the brahmacharis are particularly going door to door in the Vedic culture. Sannyasis may also go door to door. That we see very much, Nichananda uh, went door to door, so many went door to door. Uh, sannyasis, there are descriptions of how a sannyasi uh, should, should beg yeah, from a particular house and also not just in a calculated way uh, like when there's smoke coming out of the chimney and things like this um, you know just calculating the waiting for for the cooking to be completed uh, no sannyasi just leaves it leaves it up to the supreme lord Anyhow, so back to our main point. What are we going to bring to Krishna? Mm. Let us bring something wonderful for Krishna. Mm. So the Prabhupada wanted Tamal Krishna Maharaj to, uh, to be uh, a GBC secretary. Mm. But when Tamal Krishna Maharaj, yes, he wanted him to go back to India. But when Tamal Krishna Maharaj, sure, where Tamal Krishna Maharaj was able to manage in India. But when, when Prabhupada saw, he brought then, he brought a whole, uh, Tamal Krishna Maharaj introduced to Prabhupada so many new devotees that he had made uh, through the Radha Damodar Party. And then Prabhupada was immediately like, All right, you carry on. You carry on with this. Because this is what we really want. Yeah? This is what is really needed. This is it. Yeah? This is the, the very essence to make so many devotees. 
somehow or other to spread this this movement everywhere. Of course, not only making devotees, but also strengthening devotees. And this is also important. Yeah. So the more the more we focus on bringing Krishna the most wonderful offering called our life, huh? the more we focus in this way, huh? the more we can be truly fearless. Huh? But when we face Krishna, the time of death, and yes, there are all kinds of loose ends and, uh, and slip-ups and things, then they're sort of like... Uh, uh, yeah, hello, Krishna. Um, <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> uh, so, therefore, this is the moment to collect our wealth. This is the time to collect the treasures. Not for ourselves, uh, but to collect the treasures for Krishna. And, and let us come, let us come before Krishna huh, with a huge collection of wonderful gifts that then Krishna will be so pleased. Then the time of death will be a moment of great happiness. It will be a very happy transition. Uh, and that is ultimately uh, and for Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the role as a, as a topmost devotee. He didn't even think about it. Uh, he was just in great ecstasy. In great ecstasy. Uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was not bound by anything external. We, we read in Anchalila chapter 6 how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he was performing worship of his Govardhan Shila, that he was daily bathing the Shila with his tears. And that was it. So, he was really beyond uh, Re regulation beyond rules, it was like just on a platform of pure love. And so for him, the transition of death did not really, uh, it was not even an issue. For us, it is an issue. Uh, and therefore, uh, but that issue is with us while we live. Uh, so while we're in this life, in each time when we are particularly faced with our mortality, uh, when somehow or other death is getting close to us, really close, and we're actually experiencing that. Uh, and if we survive, then let that be an impetus. Let that be an impetus to collect more wonderful spiritual wealth for Krishna and bring, uh, bring that with us when we are, are meeting him again, face to face. Hare Krishna. Thank you very, very much. Tomorrow I will uh, do better on, on the sound. Uh, Hare Krishna.